The vast majority of stones used to build the Great Pyramid weighed about two and a half tons. These rough cut stones were exposed when the casing stones were removed. These stones on barges moved up the water locks and into the pond impounded by the casing stones. These rough cut stones must be quickly moved from the barge and set into the pond. This was accomplished by using the sun barge as a floating crane. The so-called sun barges, which were found in the boat pits at the base of the Great Pyramid, were used to move the two and a half ton stones. The following animation illustrates the concept of how the sun barges were used. I have a pleasure boat and when the anchor gets stuck, a simple but powerful technique is used to pull the anchor free. When the anchor is stuck, we walk to the bow of the boat. The anchor line is pulled tight and attached to the boat. Then we walk to the rear of the boat. This causes the boat to act like a lever. This exerts tremendous pulling force on the anchor line and pulls the anchor free. The sun barges were used in a similar manner. These so-called sun barges were used as floating cranes. They acted like a floating lever and the water was a fulcrum. Workers on the floating cranes would walk to the front of the crane, tipping the bow down. The two and a half ton rough cut interior stone was attached to a rope connected to the bow of the crane. The workers would then walk to the back of the crane. This would cause the crane to act like a lever and the bow would move up, lifting the stone off the barge. Once the stone is lifted by the floating crane, the crane is easily moved by workers wading in the waist-deep pond. When the floating crane is moved to the proper location, workers on the crane walk towards the front of the barge, which causes the bow of the crane to lower, which sets the stone down into the pond. How the stone is attached to the rope was difficult to animate, so that process was not depicted in the animation. That process is fully described in my book, Lost Technologies of the Great Pyramid. The rough cut interior stone is attached to the rope. Workers walk to the back of the floating crane. This causes the crane to act like a lever and the water to act like a fulcrum. The crane pivots and lifts the stone from the barge. The empty barge is moved out of the way. The boat crane is moved into position. The workers walk toward the front of the barge. The stone is lowered into the pond and set down at its final resting place. It was a fast and easy process to move the two and a half ton stones from their barges to their final resting place. This was how the vast majority of the stones used to build the Great Pyramid were moved to their final resting place. Research indicates that the barges used could support a single 16 ton casing stone. That would mean a single barge could conceivably carry five rough cut interior stones. This would allow the construction process to progress at a tremendous rate. Although there are many boat pits on the Giza Plateau, there are two floating cranes which have survived from antiquity. Although the scale of the barge, which holds the rough cut interior stones, compared to the stones is not perfect, the following animation illustrates how two stones were taken from a single barge at the same time. Again, how the ropes were attached to the stones is not depicted, but it is explained in my book. Workers walking on the floating barge cranes cause them to act like powerful levers and two stones are lifted from a single barge at the same time. The assembly process progresses at a rapid rate, a rate more rapid than any Egyptologist could ever match. There are many questions which remain which will be answered in subsequent videos in this series. But the immediate question is, 
What is done with all those empty barges? I think that you will be surprised by the answer, which is the subject of the next video.